Hi, everybody. This is Joanna. Thank you so much for tuning in. How is everybody? Yay! It's a beautiful day. Such a beautiful day. And we wanted to talk about the, um, the um, beautiful potential that is abundance in all things, abundance in all that is um, creation, abundance in all that is um, everything. There is the infinite abundance. And that is the omnipresent, it's the all, anything that we want and um, enjoy ourselves to experience and to co-create. We have those potentials um, because the source creator is all things. Source creator is benevolent joy of all that we are, benevolent joy of sacredness of who we are. And I'm just getting rid of this one screen. Thank you. All these pop-ups <laughs> and all of these, these screens. Thank you. I'm sending um, energy into the cosmos. Thank you. <laughs> and we wanted to talk about the abundance of all that we are as beings of light, the abundance of who we are and whatever we choose to experience and explore and express ourselves um, as spiritual um, um, light beings that we're creating matter on our planet and how we create matter is through how we feel and how we vibrate what our beliefs are what our excitements are and how we co-create and um, in our ever movement of um, negotiating and navigating these ever-changing realms we're met with new peculiarities of experiences that um, are meant to really test us outside of the cycles that we've always come from. That's how we're knowing that we're transcending, that we're creating these new experiences that are, that are out of the norm and out of the usual. And that's meant to be. We're meant to allow ourselves to explore the abundance of all that we are. Source provides the infinite to us. We are part and we are cells within the cells, the micro macro of all that we are as beings of light. Beings of light, meaning that we're creating through the bodies of our soul's templates on what we wanted to explore, express, rediscover, reevaluate, reintegrate, renew, and all of those experiences that comes in with a moment for moment harmonization of ever becoming. We're constantly changing, we're constantly transforming the stories that we're co creating within. And we get to realign ourselves through intention, through knowing, through creative exploration. This is what I'd like to explore today because now I know this of myself. It feels good when I'm. I'm aligned and I'm centered and I'm honoring of myself. And so the abundance is in direct relationship to your abundance of who you are. And um, we've got some fun things coming because we're going to do a little bit more channeling from the many beings that want to connect with all of you and the many beings that you're connected with and to show you the infinite amount, which has always been my passions and has been written about in my books is the infinite elegance and the infinite majesty that source is the gentleness of all that source is that's offered to you in all consciousness the infinite number of beings i know that i say that a lot but it is who we are we are infinite and as we open to this abundance of infiniteness in however we choose to think of abundance most often than not because of the realities that we're coming from it's been held in a monetary kind of an egocentric domination kind of an kind of an experience you know the more you have the more apparently you're you're valued and honored. Um, and those are okay for specific stories. But once you grow beyond that, um, there's more to your experience of who you are than the monetary, you know, numbers in your bank account. Because we're going within to know that we're far grander than we thought. And it always is a spiritual experience. Everything is a spiritual experience. Money is a spiritual experience. Your understanding of who you are as an energy being that offers energy services and offers healings and offers your gifts as wisdom and your gifts as intelligence that are freely offered in passion and a love to help the collective from your own unique perspective, um, which is what we often do. <clears throat> It's my unique joy to offer who I am in the benevolence of who I've come as, as a gift of the Christ consciousness, as a conduit, as a seer, as a visionary, and as a healer, a teacher, and a leader. However, I want to choose to express myself in any one day. I've come here as an old soul, crystalline child, as a code breaker for many, 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 many lifetimes. Um, I'm, I've been here so many times 
And now is the lifetime where we really get to stretch out and press that mastery out and really soak that mastery for all it's worth, which is what my teams are allowing me to soften into right now. Right now, they're allowing me to really have fun with mastery, really have fun with those moments where I get to be more flexible and really create those minutiae of different vibrational um, experience and environments and really be okay with that flexibility of environments. And those of us that have come from um, varying degrees of energies of uncertainty, um, depending on the household that you grow up with and how dysfunctional and imbalanced it was, you kind of create those patterns of wanting to feel safe within your environment. And sometimes you create those stories of imbalance and dysfunction because that's all you've known and that's all you were taught. Until you review yourself in the vibrational stories that you were held within, that you chose to be a part of character and story of, and your belief systems that were held within those stories. And you can choose to let them go now. Um, what part of the story do I hold now that I'm very safe in my environment? I'm always held safely. I walk with the heavens. I'm held safely within this beautiful encasement of who I am as spirit, as light. I'm honoring the guidance of my higher self and my soul. I'm being given guidance in all moments through my dreams and my synchronicities and what source offers me as the reflection of my vibration. And I trust that. It's not for me to fix or heal anybody else. It's a part of me just to express and explore who I am and offer the highest vibration of love that I can. And in that, that's my gift. Um, and that does in and of itself offer the benevolence of those to return um, monetary assistance because they honor the value of what I offer. They honor the value and the connection that, yes, that makes sense. That makes me feel really good. And I want to offer this to you. So abundance can be seen. And we talk about this in our new um, in our moon energy divine feminine wisdom and healing leadership classes that are held twice a month the next one is going to be on the 26th so if you want to join us for that class and um, we really talk about the embodiment of who you are as a divine being of spirit and really um, allowing yourself to be more directive in um, what your offering is to creation and how to uh, lead yourself in this new vocation, how to begin designing a beautiful successful platform for yourself and how to create abundance in this. And so they were showing me this morning that your abundance that you hold um, within yourself is the abundance that you receive back. And it can, again, abundance can be anything. Abundance can be your oneness with your, um, they were showing me the abundance of who you are within yourself is the most important because it's your, it's your um, expression of who you are and the passion of who you are and the exploration of, of offering of who you are that is that vibration that, that others connect with. It's that vibrational of emotion and, and intellect and, and understanding and oneness and compassion. That is the transparency between us as a collective. And those will be the offerings of our, our, our collective direction, if you will, as we're stepping out of these egocentric systems that were much steeped in um, deceit and, you know, imbalance of who's receiving what and how much and, you know, who is it really serving these systems of oligarchy, um, you know, um, systems that we've given our power away to and really shifting it back towards the people and the people honoring and people really creating these beautiful vocational systems through which is their unique gifts and their, their unique honorings that begin creating this new minutia of service and, and providing. And it's always a balanced system because we understand as light workers that the energy that we put out will come back to us in an infinite number of ways. We know that as the awakened soul. It doesn't necessarily mean that we have to sign a contract to be paid bi-weekly because we understand that we're being paid in many different ways. It's a multidimensional vibrational experience. And what we're learning in our Moon Wisdom class is how to call abundance in from different vibrational threads and how to use that in your experience of your vocational design. How do you choose to design and create that that business experience for yourself and really allow it to be the, the, um, the beautiful sacred garden that you're creating for yourself. Instead of it being a business plan, it's your garden of your design. It's your garden of what you're seeding. The intentions through which you seed will be the intentions through which you receive. And so the goodwill that you put out to, to gift others with your benevolence and your wisdom and your information and intellect and what you've gained over many, many eons of lifetimes will be directly in measure to what you receive because you're putting it out with good intentions. You're putting it out with good seed, if you will. And in that, you're allowing yourself to clear away all of those densities and all the limitations that you took on through other stories, through limitations, um, through the projections, through whatever stories that you were co-creating with, with those in those um, vibrational experiences that are no longer a part of the system now because there are projections from stories that you can choose to step out of. 
much of the collective stories are fed to us through, as we all know, media, governments, and all of those energies that are projecting certain stories to us. And we just buy into those stories and we just freely give our power away. But the process of self-awakening and the process of self-actualization, the process of sovereignty, is to return all of your light and all of your power so that you're awakening that higher mind. You're not just giving all of your mind energy over to a collective of stories that are not necessarily what your truth is and your values are for you. So you can choose to break the stories that you've been a part of. They don't matter. It's the matter that you create within it when you're entangling and engaging in those matter stories of fear of what's our perspective on you know celestial contact and so part of our new channelings will be um preparing those who so desire for first contact um, and we're going to be channeling um, different groups today for those that so desire thank you spirit I had a beautiful contact for some of my counterparts on sirius and they're they're working with me right now um to assist me in different transfer transformations of um, environments and it's really exciting it's really exciting that they're with me and I'm so very honored and we wanted to um, talk about that in regards to um, shifting your perspective shifting your perspective on who you are as abundance <laughs> and allowing yourself in your daily self-care whatever your ascension cycle is and how you're aligning yourself with your release periods of your month and your your introspection so that you're 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 giving yourself that reflection time and be introspective on how you're viewing your world and how you view yourself because introspection is are you that which you see in the world and how are your belief systems aligned and what stories can you really release out of and the cords and the and the um you know those threads and those energies that are pulling you into stories that are not of your own creation that are not of your own design your story is yours unique every day and every day you get to choose how really abundant you are you're abundant in your creativity. You are abundant in your passions to feed into your creativities. Your focus and your direction is what you create your reality. And oftentimes, especially when it's those that, you know, our loved ones and, you know, the, the mothers and the fathers and our sisters and the brothers and all of those energies that we've grown up with, sometimes it's really hard to step out of those stories because we understand that as an awakened being, um, we feel those first interactions of, connectedness and attachments to our belonging but now we're finding that our belonging as we're abundant our belonging is everywhere we belong with everyone and everything and oftentimes the path of the you know the aspirant <laughs> the path of the awakened one is to step away from these old attachments because it's part of our path to say i'm ready to let that go because i know i can i can navigate and i can be flexible in any environment and i'm meant to explore those environments just as if when our children are ready to leave the house, we would never say that you can't leave the house, you must stay here. No, you're growing, you're changing, you're evolving, you must explore your world. You must explore the world in your way, not my way. So create your beliefs and create your infinite potentiality from who you are within. And leave little of regard to give your power away to outside sources because those outside sources are programs of fear and conformity and restriction and illusion and limitation and greed and those systems are still there they're quite prevalent and everywhere we look they're there but when you become awakened and you simply go within and you live from spirit you absolutely know that there's there um it's just like this big mall <laughs> it was big this big mall there's there's a myriad of different stores that you can go into and each carries a different vibration and that's what the collective social stories are there's an infinite number of stories that you can go in and entangle with the vibrations of those stories. And you can choose to step outside and say, okay, that was a good experience, but now I want to be a part of my own creation. I get to create my store. I get to create the type of um, beautiful linens and beautiful experiences that I want in my store because my store is a unique vibration of me. And I get to choose how that store looks. I get to choose the vibration and the sense. I get to choose how it feels when people walk in. I want them to have that unique experience of, you know, when they're logging onto a show, will they be inspired? Will they be, will they be um, allowing themselves to muse about how truly illuminated they can be and how they can radiate in a new way and how they can feel differently from within just by feeling their spirit? Take a breath. And ground, Gaia wants to feel you too. Gaia wants to be a part of your abundance. And she is so abundant. When you want to feel abundant in spirit, you breathe with Gaia. And bring all of your beautiful consciousness, all that you are is a beautiful energy of light. All that you are is a beautiful energy of light that you're valued. 
take a breath and value. I'm so valued. I'm abundant in value. Oh my gosh, I'm so valuable. And just start to feed light into those energies of the inner child of those earlier story beliefs that you weren't valued or you weren't heard or you weren't occupied in the highest of intention of your parents because they were doing the best they could. And just bathe forgiveness. Forgiveness and honor into your heart. And just feel the loving flow. You'll feel it from your crown chakra and your soul star chakra. It's just bathing you white light. Just intend, I intend to fill my heart. My heart is opening. I intend to fill it with light and with love. I'm so valuable, I'm honored. The abundance of who I am is so rich. And oftentimes when I'm not vibrating in the value of me, I can see it right away because I get sucked into these stories that remind me of giving my power away or someone else having, having entitlement over me or value over me or someone having control or choice over me, which is not true, it's an illusion. Those were just earlier childhood stories of, you know, thinking that my power was not within who I was as a child to be heard and to be honored as special and unique and sacred, that my body is unique and sacred and belongs to me. Take a breath. Give yourself back the love and the honor of your body. From any time and any experience and any story that you still have remnants of energy there, reclaim that energy and call it back. I reclaim the energy from any stories that my body and my energies and my voice was not valued and I'm returning that value back to my heart by reclaiming that power and that light because I'm abundant, I can. I choose to reclaim all of those aspects of my stories that were not held in value and abundance. I'm bringing it back to me because I'm abundant. I'm not giving my power away to a story that doesn't feel good. I honor that story as a part of my wholeness, but now I'm reclaiming the light and the wisdoms held within it. And I want to create in a new way. I'm calling those energies back. And I'm just pouring those energies back into the heart and the inner child. The little girl, the little boy, the little being that felt unimportant and unvalued. I'm calling light and consciousness and benevolence and abundance from the universe. Source will always provide. Whatever it is you need, source will provide. Not for the ego, but for the spirit. You just let ego just take a rest. Just sit down, ego. Just relax. So right now we want to call our spirit forward. We want to call our soul forward. Thank you, soul. Please come forward and be with us in this moment of now. We're trying to understand and awaken and activate abundance in different ways. How I feel as abundant, how I seek myself as being abundant in the, in the wisdoms that I have, my intelligence that I'm awakening because I get to choose. So my consciousness is everything. The consciousness is how I become aware within the all, not outside of myself, for I am it and it is me. I am that I am. And as I become aware of my itness, my allness, my omnipresentness, my loveness, my oneness, as I become aware of this as my consciousness of all that I am, this is the Christ consciousness. I'm activating cells and codes and why I start to accelerate in all that I am because this is spirit. Activating spirit of spirit, consciousness of consciousness, omni of omni, allness of allness, oneness of oneness, itness of itness. However we choose to use the words, it does not matter for we are the all and why it feels so good. That's the all. That's the abundance. I am so abundant. And I get to release those stories that I held myself lack or less than or I took on other people's stories that said I wasn't important or valued. That's okay. They can have their perspective, but I don't have to own it and I send it right back. I release any and all energies, obligations. I release any projections that others held in small roles and definitions of me, and I send it back. That's their story, not mine. Don't have to take it on. I'm aligning with my highest abundant self. My highest abundant self, my higher self knows what it's doing. My soul knows what it's doing. My higher self knows what it's doing. My guides and my teams and the infinite abundant beings of consciousness that work with me. They know what is in my highest and my best. They are showing me my path ahead. And that is all I need to listen to and honor. As above, so below, as within, so without. The most ancient sacred text, my dear lighted ones, make no mistake about it. And we don't have to put a religion or a cult around it. All that has ever been meant to be is the magnificence of who you are in the abundance of who you are, to be free and to be liberated, sovereign unto your own free will. No religion needed. For you are the it, the all, the all that is, and religion is held within it. And okay, it is a truth, it is a story. 
but we are just free, liberated beings to explore the allness, the itness, the oneness, the omnipresence, the all that is love, the free sovereignty to respect and honor all people's bodies, fields, and outfolding and unfolding an un, um, undeniable expression of each soul through the expression, the allowance, and the exploration of who one is to be respected and to be honored and to be left alone in the unfolding of its own path. <clears throat> and to send forgiveness and love to those that were working through their stories that they felt they had to control and manage through any other realms than, um, than just pure allowance. Send love and forgiveness. And I give myself love and forgiveness for those stories of fear of being controlled, fear of being subjugated, fear of not being heard, fear of not being valued. I send love to all of these energies. My breath is my intention to fill myself up with love because I am abundant and the source creator and the soul within me is abundant in all things and all ways. And as I align with the soul of all that I am, as I align with the higher self of all that I am, I am abundant. And that abundance shows in all that I speak and all that I activate and all that I am and all that I do. That's my harmony of who I am as authentic light. I am beautiful and I'm authentic and I'm abundant in this. And I get to choose every day, every day, every day, every moment. I am abundant. I am abundant. My breath is abundant. My cells are receiving abundant light and abundant breath. I get to choose. I want my body and my cells to create greater activation of my alignment with my highest and best. I want to activate my Syrian aspects. I want to activate my Arcturian aspects. I want to activate the highest angelic and ascended master aspects. I want to be one with all of my ancestors that are feeding me such great light and protecting me and guiding me so. For they understand the energies that are being projected at me and they're sending it right back. They see exactly. They see all things. Spirit sees all. Spirit knows all. Spirit understands. When you're here to prove, to, um, to create the powerful, um, um, what's that word called? Presentation. The most powerful presentation of you in the offering of it, being genuine and authentic, just in your, just in your pure excitement and your sheer excitement to share who you are. That is the sacred child co-creating. That is evolution. That is the becoming of who you are and healing all things in between. That is abundance. That is your abundant evolution. That is your abundant money maker. That is your abundant, most genuine and authentic experience and expression just to be who you are. And you absolutely know that it will return because that vibration is abundant. That vibration is authentic and people can feel it. And your ancestors and your teams and your guides are all around you, supporting you and clearing the way for you and clearing away any negative energies that are trying to hold you back or hinder you or pull you back into those old vibrational stories that are not vibrationally a match for you anymore. And that's okay. That's part of the love of the abundance is to suss out what stories are a part of my vibrational now moment. I get to choose. I get to choose that all that I am is clear and free. All that I am is of my choosing and I'm in charge of my consciousness because my consciousness absolutely is my story. I'm aware every moment, every moment I call in the highest light and I send the highest light. Light is abundant and I get to provide it and I get to gift it and I get to honor it and I get to fill it with my cells. My cells are filled with light. My cells are filled with light. I'm abundant in light. My organs and all that I am as a multidimensional being, I'm abundant in light. And I get to be that vibration of, of vibracious experience. Vibracious was a new word that came to us from a channel last week. We created that word of equal vibration and vivaciousness, vibracious. And you get to be that. You get to be abundant in making up new words. You get to be abundant in creating your new reality. It's not meant to look like 3D. It's not meant to feel like 3D. It's meant to be a minutia of all things new. And you get to choose the abundance from you. You are abundant in all potentials of feeling. You are abundant in all potentials of creating. You're abundant in all creations of new creativity that are waiting to burst through your chakras. Because you're devoting enough abundant love to yourself and self-nourishment and self-potential and self-attention and self-appreciation and self-gratitude and self-love for your own daily self-care. I care about who I am. My breath is important. I'm abundant in how I feel about myself because the more profound I feel about me, the more profound my reality shows me. It's a reflection of my vibration. I'm excited to be this new version of me. I'm excited to create new. I'm excited to know that I have choice. 
And I don't have to give my power away to systems and stories that don't feel good. Why would I? No, I'm going to create new stories and I'm going to want them to feel good. And I'm going to want them to feel abundant. I'm going to want them to feel holistic. I'm going to want them to feel as if the greater good will be served, not the top 1%. All will be served. All voices will be heard. All voices will be valued. For should it not be, is that not the part of oneness? We're all are, are, are meant to receive. All are meant to receive. Is that not the blessing of source? Is that not the blessing of source? Is it? To provide us with a beautiful planet. Source did not say, but only this 1% over here is to receive. No, those were human experiences through ego. Those are human experiences through, I've got to have more than this person. This person might have more than me. I'm going to take this away from that person because I don't have enough. It's all lack. It's the breeding of lack. And it goes back to those original stories. Hold yourself in value. Just because your parents were doing the best they could and you didn't get what you received doesn't mean that you can't give it to yourself now. So heal those wounds. You're always abundant. The more abundant you feel about yourself, you're gonna call in that equal partner that absolutely feels your abundance and wants to be abundant with you and will feel that abundance because their abundant level and vibration is the same. You're not gonna be mismatched with somebody that doesn't care and honor you or disrespects you. You're gonna call in that equal vibrational match of abundance because you hold yourself in abundance. You hold yourself in abundance of who you are as a being of light. Are you a being of light? You are, you are a being of light. Acknowledge yourself, own it, claim it. I am a being of light and I create matter through this. I'm abundant in my creations. I'm abundant in my beauty. I am abundant in how I choose to preserve all that I am and my ideas and call it in for financial and monetary return because I have things I want to build with this. I'm going to build with whatever I receive because I can make something from nothing. And when I do receive something, I'm going to create even greater somethings. And it will serve the all. And it will be benevolent. And it will be light because my light is abundant because I get to choose. I get to play that story. I get to create that story. And I get to create the minutia of that story. And those vibrations, you absolutely know that the source creator and the councils of light, the galactic federation, the infinite number of beings and the guides that we all work with are threading those as well, because it is through the divine mind that those inspirations are had. That's what inspiration means, of spirit, of the divine mind of spirit. Are we living from these inspirational spaces? Are we living from these intrigues of inspiration? That is how we create through the alignment of the divine mind. Are we aligned in the connection with our higher self? Where am I being guided? What am I being guided to do? What am I being guided to co-create? And you absolutely know that it will be out of the norm and out of conformity. And that's when you take those ideas, you know, the few that you want to share those special ideas with, because you don't want to share it with the all, because most often than not, you'll get, you know, the backlash of how um, others will feel about your creations when they have no idea about your inner spiritual world and what source has in mind for you and in store for you and the collective and you'll get the negative feedback which will just put negative dampering energies on your ideas so keep your ideas to yourself when you're in the beginning stages of your creation and your leadership classes um, and so if you want to join us for that class it's on the 26th and just know that your abundance of you is is that's the epicenter that you build within and it's you and source and it's sovereignty you get to choose through your inspirations, through your creative ideas, and it's only you and your spiritual teams that get access to that. And then you start knowing that the, um, the councils and all the galactic heavens and all the threads that are meant to work with you, they'll absolutely be threaded to you. So just work in knowingness of that. You'll receive what you need, when you need to receive it, with whom you need to receive it with. That's source. That's the perfect elegance. There's no need for controlling anything. All you got to do is live from your creative abundance. That's it. Act upon what spirit is asking you to act upon without doubt, without hesitation. Spirit knows what spirit's doing for you, with you, for you, through you. Just trust it. And allow the plays and the conversations and the stories of others and the outside minutia to be what it is without getting attached to any one story or anyone, um, you know, vying for that control of that idea or that experience. No, they're just, they're just not knowing where they are because they're not going within and creating their own unique sovereignty of creativity. And that's okay but it doesn't have to affect how you go about your ideas and your creations. And this is why our society is really waking up because we've given our power away to everybody and everything. And yet we walk around most often than not at such a high percentage level of walking around unconsciously creating cycles of density and karmic, of karmic unnecessary experiences because we're not self-directed. 
We're not knowing who we are every morning. What do I want to create? What are my creative gifts? How can I create the world that I want to create within? How can I create a world where I'm constantly loved and honored and supported and empowered? And it goes back to your vibrational story of you. Are you empowering yourself? If you want to feel empowered by others, are you empowering yourself? If you want to feel accepted and supported by others and not lied to by others, are you lying to yourself in any way? What lies am I telling myself that I'm not important, that my creativity is not accepted and needed? Well, that's an unnatural truth because if you come here with a natural gift, then you're meant to express it naturally and organically and you will be fed organically from it. So what are you showing yourself? Are you in support of yourself? Are you in empowerment of yourself? Are you in absolute love with your creative genius, the abundance that Source offers you in all things? Because those stories will show you. And they'll show you the little reflections that you have around you that are trying to tug and poke at you. Because those are the reflections that say there might be some, some dissonance in my field still. So let's work on that. I release that. Allowing yourself the release. And say, yes, I must have some, some, some slight um, insecurities. Let's, let's give that some thought and let's just pour love into those insecurities. Because, yeah, I was told that my gifts were kind of weird and strange. But now it's beautiful. Now people are paying me for my weird and strangeness because they know it's a genuine, authentic vibration that assists them to open up and clear the densities, to open up and reconnect with their, with their ancient and Akashic and ancestral lineage of gifts. And they start creating a new story for themselves. They step out of what was, and they're all of a sudden creating this new reality. And wow, I really do feel different. I see things in a whole new way. And we're the portal to remind you. We're the portal to come forward and say, you're a multidimensional being of allness. You are spirit creating matter. And part of our everyday mo movement and our, our, our um, momentum that we're building for one another is to take that time to self-care, to release the, the vibrational stories that hold you in lack and limitation of fear and guilt, and release the cords that are connecting you with stories and vibrations that make you feel less than or confused or in um, <clears throat> you know, chaotic stories where there's lots of drama and, and energies that are, are just spiraling in, you know, not going anywhere, <laughs> you know, allow yourself to see it for what it is and honor it and appreciate and value it and take yourself out of it and disengage and create new stories. What is it that I want to create today? What is it that I really want to create today? Who am I? What exists within me and how can I create a new experience without? As within, so without, as within, so without, as above, so below. And why that daily self-confidence and that daily self-clarity and that daily self-reflection and the daily self-direction. That's you and spirit. You and spirit creating spirit. You and spirit creating spirit. You and spirit creating through the matter. That is your spirit. And again, we talk about the tree of life. If you're creating that tree of life through the matter of all that you are a spirit, that tree will always, always bear fruit. And it will be damn good fruit. Because your point, all that you are, is the essence of love and joy and exploration and excitement and the experience of you. That's what, that's what the society will be waking for. It will be that social altruistic experience where that love, you want to feel compassion. When you really feel compassion, it just sends shivers up and down your spine because that's your spirit harmonizing. When you know you've connected with spirit, you get goosebumps everywhere. You're harmonizing with your spirit. You're harmonizing with your higher self. And it feels good. It's letting you know something magical is occurring here. Keep going. Release those doubts. Release those fears. Release those subjugations. Release those energies that make you feel less than in lack. And send love and oneness and compassion to every story that you've seen, every story that you've reflected upon, every story that you're a part of. It's all whole, it's all a part of it all, it's all needed. But you as a sovereign being get to choose how you direct your attention, how you can create with that powerful energy. And you create a reality just for you, where your space is sacred, your bodies are sacred, the love of all that you are is sacred, your breath is sacred, you're abundant in all things, you can't help but be. Spirit is abundant, spirit's got infinite access to the infinite with you, for you, through you. You are a vessel of abundant light. You are a vessel of abundant experience. That's why we're here. We are here to experience ourselves as love. And love is the most powerful vibration in the universe. Wouldn't you like to create in just a small vibration of that? That's how your world changes. That's miraculous. And so they wanted to just come in with some little notes here that I wrote. Thank you, Spirit.
And so in these, um, in these, um, the, the time that we take to reflect upon what abundance means for us, abundance is all things. Abundance just is because that's source. <laughs> it's just like source is just love. It's all love. So when you attune yourself and that little, that little direction channel, you get to tune. And just like when you're picking a YouTube video, you get to choose the channel that you vibrate with. You get to choose that video because that video provides that certain energy that says, yes, I want to go there. This is the vibration I want to tune into. This is the vibration I want to tap into for myself. I know absolutely that I'm a part of source. So let's just feel into this abundance that is source. Source is all things. Source is the infinite abundance of all that is life, of all creation. You want to experience something, source is there, right here. Source, here, there, everywhere, it's all source. And you can place yourself in that beautiful, expansive breath and the elixir of life, the elixir of breath, and it's been written about in many ancient texts, because that's your oneness with source. That's your abundance with source, and it's infinite. There's a never-ending supply. And when you're really in attunement with that, it has nothing to do with ego about how much I can I get and how much can I put in my account and how much can I keep for myself. No, those are ego experiences. Now, once you step outside of it, it served its purpose. You understand what getting is all about. Okay, now what? That will never be fulfilling. The getting will never be fulfilling. The doing is a part of the being. When you're doing it for intrinsically spiritually aligned with your heart space, you absolutely will be fulfilled. Because fulfillment is of the spirit. Fulfillment is of your soul. Fulfillment of is just what naturally feels good for you. For no other reason, because it feels good. And you will absolutely be making whatever monetary experiences you need, because that monetary abundance might come in an infinite number of ways. Someone offering you just the supplies that you need to make what you need to make. Clients coming from anywhere that they're able to because they want to, they want to be a part of the vibration that is this new vibration of fifth dimensional co-creation. Whatever it is that source is abundant in that you require and you absolutely know you are a part of that abundance suit, it will be provided for you. That's the knowingness, as my name is. As Jesus showed me a couple of years ago, as my name is, this is my name. I'm abundant. It's source creator. So how can you create it as a part of your new knowing? Because this is your new story. Just as if all these stories over here that held you in lack because of everything that else was going on around others that held you in those stories were lack. It's okay. It's a part of the experience. But you can choose to step out of it and say, I want to be abundant in all things because that's just who I am. That's my name. I am abundant in all things. I get to own that. I want to claim it. I want to begin experiencing it. And I want to express it. I want to explore it in the infinite number of ways that source can because that's abundance. When I get to experience and explore abundance in all the ways, creatively, it's infinite. That's what we should be expressing to our children. There's just not one way you can write or paint or draw. Oh my goodness, there's infinite number of ways. We're not just going to send you to school and say, this is the only one way you can learn something. You have DNA wisdoms. You have activations within your chakras. You have so much wisdom within you and around you and about you, this spirit. How are we not teaching anything about spiritual evolution and spiritual intelligence and emotional intelligence and anything that we offer our children? Does that not seem weird? <laughs> Is that just like perpetuating limitation? If we're not offering any of these extras that are divine human potential, does that not make some sort of abundant sense? If we absolutely love and adore our children and want to offer them the abundance of source, how do we not just offer all of these extras that human potential is held within? The chakras, the DNA, our infinite intelligence as we open to who we are as spirit. The information that's held through the divine pineal and all that we are as spirit and all the information that's held as above, so below, as within and so without and all that we're able to tap into as the intelligence that is source creator. Why are we not offering these things to our children? Because that's our reality for potential in the future. We're not learning from books. Books will be a part of it and it's perfect and it's true and it's still a real story, just as everything else we've ever created. But now we're stepping into something new. Let go of the old stories. Let go. They're still there, just like going into a mall and that store is still there. But you can go into a store that feels really exciting, really powerful, really profound, really exciting, really omnipresent, really unbelievable, really undeniable, really unimaginable. Isn't that what we want to offer? Perhaps. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> to understand water consciousness, to understand light and color and have it be a part of our new creative experience. Just even a little bit. And all that other, all that other world is still there. We can still go in and tap into it. We still be a part of it. That's the glorious blessing that is abundance. 
Source will offer it all to us. We get to go back and forth and create minutia within it all. You get to choose, okay, I'm pulling all of my energy and consciousness out of that store. I'm pulling all my energy and consciousness out of that relationship, out of that circle. And now I'm going to create fully and wholly with me. Because if there's still stories and there's still upset and there's still unsettled business and all the things that we talk about and why there's called the karmic healing, the karmic healing wheel and all the things that karma is to any person, those wounds that need healing, the closures that need closing, the stories that need end endings, there's still fragments of you in that and why you, temp why you sometimes are tempted and vibrationally go back and sit within those stories because you still feel victimized, you still feel unheard, you still feel unloved. And those are the hardest ones to resolve because you have to do it from within. Because oftentimes others are not on that same vibrational level of forgiveness. They're not on the same vibrational level of, of honoring the genuineness of who you are. And things have happened and so much has happened and so much water under the bridge and you've got to give it to yourself. And that's okay. That's okay. You can still call all of your consciousness from that story and leave the rest so that source and their teams and their guides can sort out what they need. You're not responsible for sorting out any story for anybody of anything that's ever happened to you. You're there to forgive. I forgive you in that experience. I forgive you in all of those experiences. I forgive even those people I don't even know. I forgive all the people that I don't even know that have been involved in the prospects that have been, that have been a part of bringing me down and harming me. I forgive it all. I forgive all of those people I don't even know. I forgive it all. Forgive it all. Forgive it all. Forgive it all. And now I step out of that story. I claim all of my consciousness. I claim all of my consciousness because there was a lot of my consciousness that was held in those stories that were hurt. It did hurt my heart. It did make me feel sad and unwanted and unloved and unsupported. Because that's what light workers do. Every light worker and every master felt that. Every master, even Jesus, felt not supported. Jesus absolutely knew every town he went into that he would be walked right back out. Jesus knew that. Why do you think he kept walking? <laughs> He was there to offer light. He was there to offer his truth and he kept walking. It didn't stop his light consciousness still being planted in those grids because it was pure and unconditional. It didn't matter if other people didn't honor him or respect him or value him. He didn't take that on. It still bothered him though. It was still a part of his story. He still understood the allness of the story that he went to tell was that yes, you're infinite light. It's okay if you don't accept it. It's okay if you don't like me for saying it. It's okay. You're going within a story of your beliefs. That's okay. He still loved and accepted them all the way and forgave them all the way. And then returned to his unique story. This is my story and I'm here as source. I'm here as spirit. I'm a vessel of light. And I'm here to offer this vessel of light. And for those that want to join me, for those that want to sing along, for those that want to dance along, I'm here. So who's with me? That's what every master comes to show and express and be the expression of. That's it. It's not a cult. It's not a religion. Be the expression of who you are as freedom, as liberation of love. And that, my friends, dear friends, dear loved ones, dear families, that is infinite. That is abundant. Is it not? When you're fully in alignment with your spirit, are you not abundant? Every one of our classes that we've ever recorded, there is infinite abundance in those classes where people have transcending experiences than they did the moment before. That is abundance begets abundance. Light begets light. Expansiveness begets expansiveness. It's all included. How you were the moment before is included in that moment for which you're transcending. Does that make sense? Everything is needed. It's all needed. For even in those moments where Jesus was not accepted and he was run out of town and he was beaten, that was a part of the story through which he deepens his compassion and deepens his self-love and deepens his honor to the story that's for humanity. For that is what is called to the mastery of sacrifice. When you've come here as a master, there must be an element of sacrifice for you're going against everything that has been conformity. You must be okay with that. You can't stay stuck in conformity and say, I can't, I'm, I'm going to sacrifice everything I know. You've got to sacrifice everything you know and step outside of it and say, this is my truth. And I've come here to say this truth and be this truth. It's who I'm meant to be. And that's the sacrifice that a master chooses to take in all of their paths. We call it sacrifice. It's much different nowadays than back then. But nowadays it's about, yes, this is my new sacrificial truth. This is who I am. And I'm sacrificing the story I once held in. That story comes with those attachments, those stories, those lower limitation experiences that others held you in. And you got to be okay to, that's the sacrifice. I'm letting this go because that is not me anymore. My, my new version of me is much grander and it's much more filled with love and abundance. And I'm okay if you don't accept me because I accept me. 
I'm okay if you don't get me. I'm okay if you don't agree with me. I'm okay with that. Nobody's meant to. You're meant to have your unique expression. You're meant to have your unique purpose and your unique um, path. That's okay. It's all okay. It's all perfect. And a master is the one that walks it and is experiencing all of it. Is experiencing the full process of who we are as wholeness. That's how it's all alchemized. <clears throat> And even in all of those stories where, you know, Jesus is walking, he's alchemizing all the way. Any bit of hatred that he came and every bit of um, 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 detachment and, and separation that he came, he was still creating that transmutation because his love was so profound of him accepting himself. He knew absolutely the story that he was meant to tell and show and express. And then he kept exploring and expressing and showing and experience himself as love. It's not always easy. And so he wants to come forward with a message. Thank you, Christ consciousness. Thank you. And he's, so he's showing me, thank you, Jesus, for this very special experience. Thank you, Jesus. So he's showing me that he's on, um, he's sitting with his back on a tree and he's, he's by himself in a moment of solitude and the moment what we call nowadays hermit. Thank you, Jesus. And he's saying, most of you have put um, my experiences and my stories in such, um, such a raise of um, I idolatry where we idolize. Is that the word? Idolism? Where we, we idolize him and we, we place projections of stories that he was not as human as us to express those stories of emotional separation and emotional um, um, disengagement because he just loved his collective so much and that's what Joanna has been experiencing that she's loved her collective so much and she had such a great love for her planet and such a great love for all the nature animals and when she experienced such great outer um, dis disengagement and discouragement from those around her and the energies that she felt from the collective that did not accept her. Um, it caused her great pain and great heartache. And he said that masters move through these experiences and many of you have placed my journey to be so outside of the human experience, but he's showing me an experience right now where he is sitting down on the ground and it's really dusty and he's in his robe. Thank you, Jesus. And he's got his back against a tree and he's got his hand like this on his knee and is on his head and his elbow is on his knee and he's just feeling the pain of not feeling the love and acceptance for the love that he just expressed because for him it was so pure <laughs> as masters we come forward with such pure intention to just love and we understand the story <laughs> that some are just not ready for the purity of love that we offer. And it's okay, but it still hurts. And he said, so many of you have placed me outside of humanism, but he's showing me right now that it's a part of mastery because that's how compassion is earned and felt and loved and returned back. So that we feel the separation of hearts when all we do is offer love. And we feel the pain of judgment and abuse when we're not accepted. He's allowing me just to feel his experience. Thank you, Jesus. But we are here. We are here to remind ourselves that regardless of what we see in the outer world, that we are the bringers of love. And although you may have those moments that make you feel separate and alone and unsupported, <laughs> that through your reconnection, <clears throat> thank you, Jesus, my throat chakra is clearing because you are speaking the essence of truth, Spirit. Thank you. For you are a master. Thank you. <laughs> We're harmonizing with the Christ consciousness. Thank you. And that your breath and your intention and your heart in your genuineness, just to know your brothers and your sisters, just to express yourself freely and to be the expression of sovereignty and to be the expression of liberation that is love. You might not have all people accept you or honor you or love you, but that you have loved them and you have accepted them. And that is loving evolution, for it's always an inside job. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. 
So care for yourselves and care for one another. And allow your path and your story. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you. And he's saying through, through channels like you and through our connection, sweet Joanna. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> he's bringing me a beautiful moment of connectedness. Thank you, Jesus. There's more going on in the background that I'm able to explain right now. And some of it is just for me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> And so there's, he's um, emulating the experience right now through a master teaching that um, each and every one of us are abundant in our own unique spiritual expressions and who we are. And oftentimes the path will never feel um, um, as if we're completely threaded with every, everybody and those around us because everybody is going through a tremendous awakening and transformation. So be patient and be understanding and be compassionate um, and just be okay and know that your heart pulsations for just loving yourself and wanting to always return to compassion and oneness. And when you do so, you're sending out those heart pulsations of those that are really ready to meet you at that level and to want to be with you and support you and encourage you and empower you. Thank you, Jesus. There's, there's things going on in the background that they're showing me right now, and I'm just honoring this moment of sacredness. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we are your greatest cheering squad, and we empower you fully in your path of love. Thank you. So they're just showing me all of the ascended masters that are just lined up and they've all got their arms up and they're all cheering. And then they're just saying, we are your greatest empowerment of love because we're you. Oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so very good. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And all of the beautiful energies of the Christ consciousness within the grids and within all that is like consciousness. We thank you, sweet. Thank you, sweet. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you. Spirit is so sweet. Thank you. Spirit is just saying that we, all, we want you all to know that you're always supported. And we often understand how lonely it can be, especially those of you that are light workers that have been working so hard and so long. <laughs> You've been carrying these torches for so long and you're waiting for that next barrier to feel okay. <laughs> when do we get to relax a little bit? Because we still feel the challenges of not being accepted and valued in our communities. And that's all changing so rapidly. <laughs> so we thank you. And it begins again with your abundance that you are within yourself with love and support and empowerment and encouragement for you. So feel that. And I had a beautiful experience. We're calling in the Galactic Federation. <clears throat> and the Galactic Federation and the Councils of Light. And I want to reconnect with those beings. Remember, we're always in an etheric chamber when I'm calling in these beings. And they're always with me threaded um, through the Christ consciousness. Thank you Thank you, sweet spirit. Thank you, sweet spirit. And all the galactic federations and the councils. Celestial teams of anybody listening now, future now moments for the higher selves and for the souls of our collective. Thank you, spirit. And we're collecting, um, connecting with the team. And I wanted to bring this story forward from a collective called the Haptoids. And the collective of the Haptoids, there's an aspect of me in this collective from the vibration of Sirius. Thank you, Sirius. Thank you. Hi, Shishi. I am my Yes, it's Yaya Mama Katatake Shushaya Lakatakama Tataka Etake Shushaya Tataka 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 I Shushaya Mama Katatake Shushaya Tataka Tataka Etake Shushaya Tataka Tataka So they're saying right now that we're so entrained by our environments and it's really um, important that we connect to what we offered yesterday as that we are the initiators of our environment, not the environment retraining and entraining us. So if we can really get into um, these vibrational um, um, experiences and explorations that we are the creator of our environment and we don't necessarily fall into the entrainment of old stories that do not serve us because we often look for the support and the empowerment um, of the environment and oftentimes those environments are again from those old experiential stories that still keep us in those old experiential roles and so they're showing me that part of their experience with me and they're showing me right now and they're with me right now thank you I could take a shishi, I am my eight, the a am my eight. Hi, shishi, I am a car. I shishi, I am a makaya to the gate, the gate, the yamamaya to the gate. Okay, so they're just showing me a story. 
oftentimes I get the message by the vibrational stories. Thank you. <clears throat> and that our environment, because we're so entrained as vibrational, emotional beings, that we are so entrained by the environment around us that we forget that we are the powerful creators that can change and shift that environmental story. Because we are not the environments, we are the light within it. And how can we create a new story from within first and take ourselves out of those stories that that hold us in such disempowerment that we are not supported, that we are not valued, and that we are not truly loved as the beings of who we are. And they were showing me um, a story because they're supporting me right now to move into new environments and to move into new experiences that are unlike any others because we're meaning to evolve and stretch ourselves into new experiences. And they're not meant to feel like the old stories. They're just not. You want to challenge yourself to feel different as, as often as possible. You are an evolutionary being of love and light. Experience yourself. Explore yourself and reach up and reach, reach deeper and wider and into vibrations of potential that you are not used to. What is the vibration of joy? Can you feel into the vibration of joy in the infinite number of ways that joy can be offered? Joy is an infinite expression. It truly is. Love. Oh my gosh. Love is an infinite expression. There's an infinite miracle of, 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 of abundance that we don't even have words for. The infinite upon infinite. That is source creator. That is love. We don't even have words for this expression of love that can be explored, but it is right here, right now, if you so choose. Can you be this exploration of love? For as the exploration of love, it will take you anywhere at all places and all at once. This is self-actualization, dear lighted ones. It is not just to say I have a 5D experience. No, why stop there? You're infinite. And so they're showing me in this vibrational story of the haptoids. Thank you. Hi, Shishi. For those of you that have vibrational experiences in Sirius, those are codes for you. <laughs> Thank you, Sirius. Um, and those are the haptoids. The haptoids are amphibian beings. They are able to explore land and water experiences. And they're assisting many of you to shift into experiences through which you are unfamiliar with. Now remember, all of you are most often entrained by your environments of familiarity and patterns and habits. However, you are allowing yourselves as a spirit of the infinite and the abundance of all things that you are malleable, you are expandable, you can shape shift and you can be and you can experience yourself at all things in all ways. And so are you okay with allowing yourself to be in the unknown? What does the unknown mean? And often than not, the lower mind will just throw you back into a story that's familiar because <laughs> you're habitual beings. That's what you do. But now you're meant to just expand and reach up through the higher mind. Reach out to all that you are as a creative being of infinite potentiality for you are. How may you go into the unknown with your customs? Customs of honoring of what you know to be medicine, what you know to be learning. How can you expand and stretch it out, expand in new ways? And often than not, the lower mind will keep pulling you back into the way that it's always been done, how it's always been done, and that's okay. It's a part of the unique story. But those of you that are really excited for something new, and those of you that have felt bored for so very long, you are abundant in your creativity. And is feeling out of your box okay? Can you feel okay out of your box? Will you feel safe out of your box? Of course you will. Resource is with you. You are an infinite ocean of love. You are an infinite ocean of love. And that's what they're showing me right now. They're showing me this beautiful infinite ocean. And they're showing me that the experience of, in my reflection, inter outer, um, inner outer micro macro as I'm explaining it to you I'm expressing the experience that I'm showing and having at the same time and that's the Christ consciousness thank you for that clearing there's clearing density within my chakras right now of safety of going outside the comfort zone that are held within many of you that are listening that's why I'm clearing it that's going outside the bottleneck, remember, of all those fears and unknown and um, transitions of families and transitions of people when they're just new cycles of becoming and just new cycles of going outside your comfort zone and it looks different, it feels different. That's okay, you're always safe. 
Expand what you know to be the infinite abundance at a source. It will be expressed and experienced in an infinite number of ways. That's why you come to evolve. You want to experience yourself anew in all ways. That's evolution. I want to know that I'm evolving today. I want to know that my environment will be evolving. I want to know that I am offered the infinite array of energy vibrations that I'm able to. I don't want to be held in a pattern of the same as, same is. I want to explore. My spirit is aching to explore. And my spirit is aching to, to be new. And so as I'm in this beautiful ocean of, of energy, the ocean is a symbology of the omnipresent. But this ocean shows me that as I'm moving in this beautiful ocean, I see all of these um, ocean animals that are coming up to investigate because they sense my vibration within the water. They sense the vibration and they're not familiar with it. For remember, as I'm exploring the unknown, the unknown is exploring me. And all of these energies that are in the unknown, they're coming to say, well, what is this? And who is this offering this experience of unusual energy? What is this all about? For remember, as you're pressing out into the unknown and you know that as a soul, as a spirit, you are stepping into something that is new, all that is unfamiliar with you will also want to check you out. It doesn't mean that there's an energy or a judgment with it. It's that it's new. Let's explore. We're all going outside the box at once. And each and every vid individual within that ocean is going to have its own unique experience because they are also experiencing the out of the box as you are. You have called their out of the box in as you've called your out of the box to go. I want to go out. And as you press out with that energy, that energy is also touching someone else and says, I'm ready to see something that's new. I'm ready to see something I've never felt before and heard before and experienced before. And even if they have a judgment about how that feels for them, at least they're getting that return energy to say, what are my beliefs about this? And I'm, does that resonate with me? And it's okay if it doesn't. Does that make sense? Have it be okay that have it be okay that all energy reflections are however they want to choose to to reflect upon it. That's how you always know that you are absolutely genuine in who you are. You don't have to um, you don't have to succumb to anyone else's availability or validity of who you are. Their their responses, their energies will be what they need for their soul story. They will then have to reflect upon why did I react that way? Wow, that was really exciting. Wow, I, I took that in. That was that really felt good. That really felt different. Hmm, how do I feel about that? That is the exploration of evolution. And they're also showing me there's many stories that are going on right now, and I'm trying to go through these stories as fast as I can because they're multidimensional and they're coded all as all of you know. In this ocean of experience. <clears throat> As the spirit of me is ready for something new, is ready for this new phase, is ready for this new experience, they're showing me that the energies of pulsation, because I'm a subtle energy field vibrator, receiver and sender, I can sense things, see things at a multidimensional level within vibrations, thank you spirit, things that are happening all at once, it's a sphere of energy, it's a sphere of now, multidimensionals, multidimensional codes and stories happening all right now. They're showing me that as I am stepping out of this old skin into this new skin. I say skin based on patterns and stories and energies. When you step outside the box, when you step outside the norm, when you step outside the pattern, when you step outside the cycle, you become new. The body of you, all that you are is new. Because you are now saying with intention, I choose to create the environment through which my intention is love and light and exploration of oneness. Your body constituents, all that you are begins to change, therefore sending a new pulsation within the ocean of all that you are. Does that make sense? And in the very same effect, dear lighted ones, because this is just the all that is, it's the omnipresent. It is the equal balance of all things. Equations of energy, equations of energy. As you step out into this, there will be the remnants of these energies that you are leaving behind that will still sense that, and they will want to be a part of what's going on. Do you see what we're saying? They'll also want to know what that you are leaving because they felt the resonant pulsation of it. Something's changing what's going on. And that's when you have those energies of discomfort and unknowingness because those that often knew your pattern and cycle and that was always present with them, they're also feeling the now disruption because it's moving. But that also allows that trigger to occur. Well, how can I evolve? It's meant to occur. And as those vibrations are shed and put back into the omnipresent to be transmuted and all anew because it's residue, that's still a vibrational residue that was put off as you left, if you will. It's all now. There's no linear. We're explaining it in the way that we can in the words that we have. It's all now. So this choice, the choice that you are, the free will that you are, the love that you are, the abundance that you are, and that now creating changes all. The vibration of the allness around you through which the ocean is feeling those ripples called the butterfly effect. Your choice in saying, now I am abundant. Now I choose my new reality. Now I get to explore something new about me, who I am in and out, all above and all below. For I am abundant in new things. And I'm ready to press out into this environment that I get to choose to create. And it will support me and it will empower me and it will love me. 
And yes, there will still be minutiae energies that I must traverse because that's a part of soul expression and exploration too. I'm a master. I can do that now. I'm constantly testing and honoring and loving and flowing and experiencing, but it doesn't have to be such um, laborious tactics, if you will. It doesn't have to be such a game. It can just be the beautiful song that now is because you trust yourself as being able to go within all environments and be flexible in it. Because it's always in love and oneness, always in love and oneness, always in love and oneness. You know that it's all you, all parts of it within the ocean. If we were to say to you in the same illustration and why we're thinking of oneness in this way and why she explained the story that she did earlier, that it's all included, it's all whole. If you were in this ocean of wholeness and you're moving through this exploration of stepping into new territory, being the vibration of choice, being the vibration of new, would you say that that experience over there with that, that fish that came up to see what is going on, I want to go outside the box, I want to explore that vibration because it is all vibration, that's why the fish is there. Would you say that that fish is not included in the ocean just because your now focus is over here, just because your now focus is saying, I want, to, I want to play with this fish over here. No, it's all a part of the one, it's all a part of the ocean. And it, they're showing me that it's oftentimes from the old linear stories that we've placed ourselves within limitation and fear and lack, not, not being included, not being empowered, not being supported, not being valued, all those stories that we're, we're healing and we're bathing in our oneness, that is all accepted, it is all one. That that's how we become entrained through the environment. That we now putting you in an ocean where everything is the ocean. You can't take the ocean out of the ocean. The ocean is the ocean. Just no matter as if you're on land, source is all. However, oftentimes, because you can't see the air, the air is there, but you can't see it, you then start creating other things that you see outside of you, like planes and trees and, and little animals that are walking by. Is that not source as well? You're creating the matter to show yourself that source is all things. You're thinking of, of it as separate and saying, well, that's a dog. Well, yes, it is. It's still source. It's a tree. Well, that's a tree. How can that tree be source? It's all source. If we go back into the ocean, the ocean is the omnipresent. The ocean is the all. The ocean is the abundance. How separate is that ocean from the air? It's all source. It's all your expression and your exploration and your experience of source, of you. It's all source. It's all the abundance of source. It's all the abundance of the new. If you so desire, it's always free will on how you choose to perceive who you are, what you exist within and what exists within you and how you can constantly omni-reflect, omni-reflect, omni-reflect. Who am I in this moment? Am I abundant? Am I pure and genuine in my authentic offerings? It's okay that I'm not accepted by all because I accept me. I don't have to be validated by anyone or anything because I validate me. And those stories are all still a part of my story. That story of non-validation allowed me to get to validation. Do you see what we're saying? It's all whole. You can't take that droplet of water out of the water. The water is the water. The water is the all, the water is the ocean. That ocean is a part of source. The source is the source. As within, so without, as my name is. Healing of thy name. Thy name is all those things that I chose to separate. Those healings of thine name is the stories through which I separated, or I was told to separate. I was said, don't go there, don't do that. You're not special, you're not included, you're not valued. Those are the stories that are which of part of the whole, that you get to say, I get it now. I'm creating a new version of it. The it is all that is. What story I create now? It's part of the all it. So have it be open. Have it be itness. Have it be allness. Have it be loveness. Have it be all that is its oneness. How exciting. And so many of you that are stepping, tapping into these new experiences of who you are, you get to explore yourself anew. You get to go into these new versions of who you are. Can you be okay with that? Can you be okay with the new ground that you might walk on or swim in? Can you be okay that the air might be different? Can you imagine how the air might be different? Can you imagine the life that is in the air that you think you don't see but is actually there? How many spirits and guides are with you now? Can you feel into that? Can you feel into all the love and the energies that are with you? Highest spirit, high, mighty has spirit, spirit and inspiration. Thank you, spirit. I create this high, high mighty God. So grateful. Thank you, spirit. Thank you, spirit. Hi, Shishimamakaitakeitakeiamamakatataka. And they're just showing me visions of the energies and angels in the room. Thank you, angels. Hi, mamakatataka. Shishimamakatataka. Can you experience your world anew and look at all that you are seemingly looking at and knowing that it is all source? It's not separate from source. It's not source you have to call unto the heavens. It is source. Those that stand before you are source. Can you see the God in them? Can you see the love in them? Can you see them as a new story of potential? Can you see them as a new story of love? 
Or will you still go back to the old stories that you held them in? Do you see what we're saying? Will they hold you in the stories? Perhaps they might, but if you continue to see them in a new story of acceptance, would they see you differently? They would have to change, would they not? If they are still stuck in showing you and being of that expression of an old story, then they just might not be before you because they're not willing to see you any differently than what you were to them before. That's why the now is all that matters. The now is all that matters. The now is all that matters. The now heals all. Because what you choose to see, what you choose to experience in this now is how your reality is created. Are you familiar with the infinite? And that causes some trepidation. <laughs> and that's normal. Because you've been sold and told such small stories of yourselves. It's okay. Have it be okay. Be blessed and be honored of it all. Because part of that smallness is part of the bigness. Does that make sense, dear lighted ones? That drop of the water that's in the ocean is still a part of the ocean. It is not separate from it. It's appearing because that's the story it chooses to see at that moment that you take that droplet of water out, but that water is still in the ocean. Just as when you get out of the ocean from swimming, that ocean is still within you. Does that make sense, dear lighted ones? You carry the vibration of the ocean with you. That's why you're always so connected with it. That's why you always have so much fun when you're there. Can you allow yourself to see the it of all that is? The abundance of all that is, that's abundance. Is it not the abundance? Would you say that the ocean is abundant? Yes, mm -hmm. it's so abundant. We're sorry that we've polluted it. Mm -hmm. But now can we pray for the light to go into the abundance of all that the water is and send healing light and healing love to the oceans and clarify the oceans and the waters that it needs and the energies that it needs to be more clear and pure for the animals that live within it. And the life that lives within it that reminds of how that reminds us of how abundant we are. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Spirit. Hi, Shishi. Hi, Amamka. Hi, at the case. Can you allow yourself to experience yourself as abundant? You are so abundant. You are so abundant. You are so abundant. You explore yourself as abundant. Can you excite yourself as abundant? Abundant in all things, all moments. You are now infinite and abundant. Now I am infinite, I am abundant. My cells are infinite. My mind is infinite. I have infinite creativity. My chakras are opening. My chakras are infinite. My chakras are being fed breath of infinite light and potential because I intend it, I choose to intend it. I choose to create through the consciousness of all that I am. For my consciousness is all things. My consciousness creates my reality. And damn, I choose to feel good and infinite and abundant because I get to. You are abundant. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Spirit. <laughs> Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Spirit. That was so lovely. Thank you. I just get so zoned out <laughs> in those, as they put me in these beautiful and vibrational experiences where I'm just in, in this beautiful ocean and I'm just being healed from the ocean energy and the ocean animals. <laughs> beautiful ocean energy. Oh, so much love. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Spirit. I just see this beautiful yellow light that's bathing planet Earth, bathing planet Earth. So play with the, the energy of abundance. What does that mean for you? The beautiful abundance of love that you have within you, that you are, the abundance of creativity that you are, the abundance to express and explore yourself and offer this forward. Because as you offer yourself through the authentic abundance of who you are, it will always be returned. It will be returned in friendship. It will be returned in kind. However and however source and your spirit and your guides are honoring you in the receivership of it. You will always, always, always receive your abundant. You're abundant in your ability to transform. You're abundant in the ability to see and to know and experience yourself in you as love. Love is everything. Love is all things. We're abundant in love. We're abundant in our transformational experiences of who we are. Infinite moments to explore and transform. We're all abundant. It's all needed. It's all one. Every story, every experience, every, every challenge, every moment that we've cried and every moment that we felt left out, it's all a part of the one. It's not excluded. It's a part. It's just how we perceive it in the moment. It's how that story wants to be played out in the moment to understand it as a part of the one. Because it's not, it's impossible to not be a part of the one. The one is the one. Just as if that fish is in the ocean is not, not in the ocean. It's always in the ocean. It's a part of the one. It's just how we perceive it at the moment of that separation. 
that separative story that said, I'm feeling the emotions of a human not being, not being accepted, not being valued as Jesus was showing me. And that was his expression. He had to move through those emotions. He still felt it. He was a master and he knew that he still had to process those emotions of not being accepted in whatever villages that he was thrown out of because of his unconditional love just to express who he was as love. He still had to process it. That's how he gained his mastery. That's how he's the master to us now in a human form walking. He's showing us. Yes, of course they have the higher vibrational experiences, but he lived it. That's what masters do. They live the experience of the human. That's how they know how to heal. That's how we're able to offer what we offer as the Christ conscious because we're feeling the expression of those energies, of those emotions and how to heal it. The vibrational stories, the psyche wounds, the energy of feeling left out and not loved or rejected. So love it, heal it. That rejection is a part of the love for that you own it. I love it. I am a part of it. I'm one in it. And then it doesn't hold you so captive in those stories that you fear and that you have nightmares about and you feel like they have a hold on you. They don't. Just honor it. Accept it. It's a part of you. And now you get to know that you're accepting yourself in it. It's so beautiful. <laughs> I'm so grateful. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you. For those of you that like to join us on the 26th, for our new moon energy healing and wisdom class and our leadership class, please feel free to send me an email with um, a donation. That would be great. Anybody that would like to donate, yay. donate for our beautiful offerings and our beautiful energy that we send out so lovingly and with such great genuine compassion for all of you that are going through your path. We understand and we love you all. I'm still clearing. Thank you. And just call in your angels and your beings um, of light just to feel into the frequencies of abundance. What does that feel like? And know that you can create whatever reality you want around abundance because abundance is all things. It's always source creators always. <laughs> so just play with abundance. You're fully abundant all the time. And we love you and we honor you. And um, we wish you rainbow hugs and tickles. Thank you, everybody. Bye. We love you. Bye. Rainbow tickles.